Archaeologists, they're always digging stuff up, and in doing so, they discover all manner of intriguing things. These are some of the most enigmatic. These are the 20 most mysterious things discovered by archaeologists. Number 20. The Battle of Gotland on July 22, 1361, Valdemar IV of Denmark, Valdemar Atterdag, sent an army to the west coast of Gotland. At this time, the Goths of Gotland paid taxes to the King of Sweden, although Visby's population was diverse and included Russians, Danes, and Germans. The Swedes of Visby defended themselves from the attack as best they could at about 300 meters from the city walls, but they were not an army. They were mostly peasants, poorly armed and poorly organized against the soldiers of the Danish army. The Swedes suffered 1,800 casualties for only 100 of the Danes. It could be said that it was a real massacre, and the corpses faithfully reflect that reality. Archaeologists discovers what no one was supposed to see. The most famous Viking skull we know of is undoubtedly that of a man who fell in the Battle of Visby. This skull is one of the numerous remains excavated by researchers in the mass graves where more than 1,800 Swedes who succumbed to the attack of the Danish troops of King Valdemar on June 22, 1361 in the Middle Ages. It was a battle between Vikings, and it was a very bloody and savage battle from what this skull shows us. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. This right here is a perfect example of when an archaeologist discovers what no one was supposed to see, because this is the Chan Chan Mud Citadel in Peru. It is the largest mud city in all of America. Located in the Mochi Valley, this place is considered perhaps the most important architectural representation of pre-Inca history, and it's clear to see why. Isn't it utterly stunning? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. The Copper Scroll Treasure in 1947, two Bedouin shepherds who were trying to rescue one of their goats, which had fallen into the chasm in the Qumran Valley, present-day Israel, found some ceramic pots containing seven parchment scrolls. They sold them in pieces to a couple of antique dealers in Bethlehem, and as usually happens in these cases, some of them circulated from hand to hand until 1954 when they ended up in the hands of an archaeologist from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He noticed its historical value and encouraged the search for other similar pieces. In this way, over time, some 600 parchments were found, plus many other loose fragments. They are what we know now as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Most of them are made up of parchment or papyrus, but there's one that is different, the one known as the Copper Scroll, evidently because it's written on a long sheet of that metal. Uh, to be exact, they are two rolls with a single text arranged in 12 columns and engraved on three very thin sheets 80 centimeters long by 30 wide, which originally formed a unit of 2 meters 40 in length. It was discovered on March 14, 1952, during archaeological excavations at the bottom of Cave 3 of Kirbet Qumran. Little is known about what the scroll actually says, but it's believed that it is the directions to a vast and hidden treasure. Number 18. Disappearance of the San Xingdui the San Xingdui ruins, located in Guangxin City, about 40 kilometers from Chengdu, the capital of southwest China's Sichuan province, are considered to be the remains of the ancient Shu Kingdom, which disappeared overnight from southwest China between 3,000 and 5,000 years ago. It was at the beginning of the last century that a farmer came upon the discovery of stone and jade remains that seemed to point archaeologically to the disappeared Chinese city. In 1986, two ritual tombs filled with more than 1,000 treasures, including gold masks, bronze vessels, jade tablets, ivory objects, and sacred trees were discovered at San Xingdui. For archaeologists, the most enigmatic thing is that the unearthed objects are different from the rest of any period of Chinese civilization. An earthquake that occurred 3,300 years ago could have been the cause of the disappearance of the San Xingdui culture, according to the results of a recent investigation. According to experts from Tsinghua University in Chengdu in China, the phenomenon caused huge landslides that blocked access to the main water supply, forcing the inhabitants to abandon their their homes. San Xingdui is one of the most important archaeological discoveries in China in the 20th century. It covers an area of 12 square kilometers and offers evidence of the heterogeneous origin of the Chinese civilization. Number 17. Nearly complete mammoth skeleton found on Michigan soy farm. 
the remains of an ancient mammoth discovered by a farmer southwest of Ann Arbor, Michigan, may shed light on early human life in the region. A team of paleontologists from the University of Michigan unearthed the animal's remains and managed to recover 20% of the mammoth's skeleton, including the skull, two large tusks, numerous vertebrae, the pelvis, and the shoulder blades. All these bones belong to a mammoth specimen that probably lived between 11,700 and 15,000 years ago. Together with the mammoth, excellent evidence of human activity has also been discovered. They believe that humans were in this place and they may have butchered and stored the meat so that they could come and collect it later. Mammoths and mastodons, which are another type of prehistoric creature in the elephant family, roamed North America before their extinction 11,700 years ago. They also found three rocks the size of a basketball that could have served to anchor the carcass and a small stone that could have been used to cut the animal's skin and meat. The date on which the humans arrived in the Americas is unclear and is the subject of lively debate among archaeologists. The find, if the presence of humans alongside the mammoth is confirmed, could establish the date of arrival of humans in southeastern Michigan. Number 16. The Rosetta Stone the French invasion of Egypt, led by Napoleon at the end of the 18th century, opened the doors to the rediscovery of the country from a scientific point of view for the Europeans. Egyptology was born. What would clearly be the star piece of the expedition was the Rosetta Stone. It was found by chance during repair work on the French Fort of Julien near the town of El Rashid. It had been reused to build one of the walls. Its discoverer, the engineering lieutenant Pierre-Francois Xavier Bouchard, immediately realized its importance. From Alexandria, it was transferred to Cairo, where it was kept in a kind of archaeological museum that had been improvised in the Institute of Egypt. The incipient collection would be expanded little by little throughout the campaign. The Rosetta Stone is a large granodiorite stella with a decree made in 196 BC under the range of Ptolemy V. As was usual in this type of document, the text was written in three official scripts, hieroglyphic, demotic, and Greek. For a long time, the decipherment attempts were unsuccessful, so the French made several copies of the stone, then began a frantic race to be the first to decipher the sacred writing. The presence of the names of Ptolemy and Cleopatra in Greek, repeated in hieroglyphics within a cartouche, would be the key. Number 15. 3,000-year-old lost golden city discovered under the sand of Luxor, Egypt. An Egyptian archaeological mission announced the discovery of what they consider to be the largest ancient city ever found in the country, which has been hidden under the sands of Luxor for 3,000 years. The city, apparently called the Rise of the Aten, was founded by Pharaoh Amenhotep III, the ninth king of the 18th dynasty who ruled Egypt from 1391 to 1353 BC and was the largest administrative and industrial settlement at the time. The site, which has also become known as the Lost Golden City, continued to function during the reigns of Tutankhamun and and I. The ancient city is located between the Temple of Amenhotep III in Memnon, west of the modern city of Luxor, and the Temple of Ramses III in Medinei Habu. There's an Egyptian mission now in search of the mortuary temple of Tutankhamun, but many foreign missions searched for this city and never found it. Excavations began in September 2020, and within a few weeks, the mission began unearthing mud brick formations in all directions that belong to the ancient city, which remain in a good state of preservation and include almost complete walls. Since then, several areas or neighborhoods have been discovered. The streets of the city are lined with houses, some with walls up to 3 meters high. Number 14. Darren Kuyu – Underground City Darren Kuyu is the largest underground city in the world. It's located in the province of Cappadocia, Turkey, and has a depth of 75 meters. The sprawling complex consists of a labyrinth of tunnels and chambers covering an area of 445 kilometers square and used to house around 20,000 inhabitants. In the 1960s, a man was renovating his house when he made one of the most amazing archaeological discoveries in history. By breaking down a wall of his basement, he found himself with more space than he expected. He had discovered a gallery that led to a whopping 18-story deep underground city that we now know as Darren Kuyu. In front of the entrances is another 20 block. Darren Kuyu was gradually carved out of volcanic rock and has numerous underground settlements connected by tunnels that stretch for kilometers, similar to a colony of ants, only the size of a human. Parts of the underground network reach a depth of 75 meters. The rock from which Darren Kuyu was carved is made of layers of compacted volcanic ash known as tuff. This soft rock is porous and brittle, which explains how they were able to carve the underground city extensively using simple tools like a pick and a shovel. Number 13. Toland Man 
A recent study has been able to reconstruct the Toland man's last meal with such a high degree of detail as to reproduce the recipe, which opens new paths to discover the origin of this type of corpse. In 1950, Emil and Vigu, two Danish brothers, found one of the so-called swamp mummies, as uncertain as they are common in Northern Europe. These are naturally embalmed bodies that constitute one of the few sources to decipher the uses, customs, and beliefs of ancient Northern Europe. Since then, the so-called Toland man, in honor of the children who found him, constantly offers data on the human ancestors who inhabited the lands that currently make up Germany, Ireland, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and, above all, Denmark. Toland man would have been buried at the end of the 4th century BC. According to the studies, this man was killed and submerged in swampy waters more than 2,400 years ago, when he was between 30 and 40 years old. The soil did a job of mummification so precise that the body preserves hair, brain, skin, nails, and intestines, and even a leather noose around the man's neck, which leads the investigators to believe that he was hanged as the victim of a ritual sacrifice. Between 12 and 48 hours before he was hanged and buried in that swamp, he ate porridge made with barley, flax, and seeds of plants and weeds, as well as fatty proteins from fish. Number 12. Rare 2,000-year-old chariot racing mosaic unearthed. A 4th century mosaic floor showing chariot race scenes at the Hippodrome has been discovered in Cyprus, the only one of its kind on the island and of which there are only a handful in the world. Of the hundreds of mosaic floors discovered around the world, only seven show races at the race course. This one in particular is distinguished by the richness of the details and by showing complete scenes of a race in which four chariots pulled by four horses compete. They possibly represented different competing factions in ancient Rome. The Hippodrome was very important in ancient Roman times. It was the place where the emperor appeared before his people and projected his power. The mosaic, which measures 11 meters by 4, has not been uncovered in its entirety. It appears to be part of a villa belonging to a wealthy man or nobleman at the time Cyprus was under Roman rule. It is located 30 kilometers west of Nicosia, the capital, and can shed light on ancient times in the interior of the island, about which little is known. Most of the important excavations on the island are located near the coasts, where populations, large and small, flourished. The oldest population in Cyprus dates back to the 10th millennium BC. Number 11. Nazca Lines the giant and mysterious Nazca Lines are a set of biomorphic, phytomorphic, and geometric geoglyphs designed and executed on the desert of Nazca and Palpa, Department of Ica, Peru. It's often believed that these lines can only be seen from the sky, therefore they've generated all kinds of questions and speculations. Were the Nazca Lines dedicated to the gods? Was there possible technology in those times for the magnitude of this work? Were they landing strips for aviation prototypes from the Nazca culture or further afield for extra terrestrial beings? Were they made by human hands? The truth is, the beauty of the Nazca Lines can be seen from the top of the surrounding hills, which radically changes the way we understand them. In fact, it was thus that the Peruvian archaeologist Toribio Mejia Zespa discovered them in the 20th century, specifically in the year 1927. The Nazca Lines stand out because they cover about 400 square kilometers. Other sources indicate that they can cover up to 800 kilometers squared. In any case, they are the largest in the world. The width of each line can vary between 40 and 210 centimeters wide. Just as the width of the line varies, obviously the length of each line depends on the layout. There can be lines of up to 295 meters. The depth of the furrows also varies from simple shallow indentations to trenches of no more than 30 meters. Number 10. New Dead Sea Scroll Discovered in Israel's Qumran Caves the discovery of dozens of new fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls has put an end to six decades without discoveries at the site where the first preserved texts of the Bible were found. Since the scrolls, dated 2,300 years ago, were found in 1947 in the Caves of Qumran, only a few more fragments had been found in 1961 in the Cave of Horrors, so-called because of the dozens of corpses buried inside. The new parts of the biblical scrolls were located in that same Cave of Horrors, together with the mummified remains of a child who lived 6,000 years ago and a basket from the Neolithic era dated more than 10,000 years ago. Both were in a good state of preservation because of the extremely dry Dead Sea environment. The 
researchers emphasize that the fragments have served to complete parchments already preserved from 1947. They have also verified that the slight linguistic variations detected in the biblical text show that they were not static copies, but rather evolved along with the culture of the time. The text reads, These are the things you have to do. Tell the truth to each other, act with perfect justice at the doors of your house, do not cause harm to others, and do not incline to perjury, because those are things that I hate, says the word of the Lord, according to the reconstructed text with the new fragments. Number 9. Oldest Known Human Footprints in North America Discovered at National Park Ancient footprints 23,000 years old delay the date of arrival of humans in America. The finding is decisive for the debate on how the Homo sapiens arrived in the Americas, the last continent populated by our species. Human beings would have arrived 7,000 years earlier than archaeologists thought. The 23,000-year-old footprints were discovered in the southwestern United States, which suggests that human settlements in North America predate the end of the Ice Age, which is supposed to have allowed this migration. The new discovery thus offers definitive evidence that humans arrived in North America much earlier than archaeologists thought, no less than 7,000 years earlier. These footprints were left on the shore of a now dry lake in what is now a desert in New Mexico, within White Sands. National Park. Over time, sediments covered the footprints and protected them, until erosion exposed them to the great delight of scientists. Many footprints appear to be from adolescents and children. Larger footprints from adults are less frequent, the authors wrote. Animal tracks, mammoths, and prehistoric wolves were also identified. Some, like those of giant ground sloths, are even contemporary and close to those of humans on the lake shore. Number 8. The Grave of Richard III the archaeologists who found the remains confirmed that they belonged to the king. They provided photos, analysis of the bones, and DNA tests. The body was buried under a parking lot, but was occupied by a church until the 17th century. His kingdom for a horse. But who knows what Richard III would have offered in exchange for a decent burial, because ending up buried under a parking lot isn't exactly the fate a king expects. And yet, there, among the cars parked in the center of Leicester, a team of British archaeologists and researchers went to dig for the body of the sovereign, who reigned over England between 1483 and 1485. Indeed, they found a skeleton and relevant evidence that it was Richard III. He had skull damage, suggesting he may have been killed in battle, and spinal curvatures revealing scoliosis, which matched his story. The group of scientists have carried out radiocarbon dating, which allowed them to identify the date of the burial, although with a margin of error of between 80 and 100 years. Forensics have analyzed the bones and have concluded that he was a man who died around the age of 30. Richard III was 32. They studied his teeth, skull, and spinal cord traumas, and they've also compared the DNA of the skeleton and that of Michael Isbin, alleged descendant of Anna of York, sister of the Sovereign. All to reach a verdict announced recently, we confirm the final finding of Richard III. Number 7. Dinosaur Found in Chile a team of scientists found the remains of a semi-articulated dinosaur in Cerro Guido, north of Torres del Paine, in the southern Chilean region of Magallanes, according to the Chilean Antarctic Institute. The dino, called Stegoros elengasson, is roughly two meters in size. The dinosaur specimen that preserves a good part of the skeleton is still a mystery when it comes to what exact type of animal it was. But it is the first kind of dinosaur of this type found in Magellan, being one of the southernmost and one of the new species for Chile. Finding articulated or semi-articulated species, according to researchers, is of great importance due to the amount of information that they can provide about the animal. A variety of mammals were also found, specifically three morphotypes corresponding to the Cretaceous. <laughs> a period from 145 to 65 million years ago, in addition to a variety of other species, such as possible lizards, fish, and marine reptiles. The expedition was aimed at continuing the search for traces that corroborate the connection between Antarctica and South America in the Cretaceous. One of the reasons that led the scientists to study this area is that it was a corridor for several million years between South America and Antarctica. Number 6. Tutankhamun's Tomb the discovery of the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun by British archaeologist Howard Carter in the Valley of the Kings near the city of Luxor in Egypt occurred on November 4, 1922. 
The search for the final resting place of the Egyptian monarch of the 18th dynasty, who died before turning 20, had taken the researcher and his team about 80 years. But without a doubt, all that time invested was worth it. I can see wonderful things, was the famous phrase with which Carter described what he could glimpse inside the tomb when he peered in from a small opening he had made in the entrance to the enclosure. Indeed, the day that the archaeologist and his patron, Lord Carnarvon, entered the site, they found enormous treasures that had remained there, oblivious to human sight, for more than 3,300 years. Among the nearly 5,000 objects present at the tomb were statues, thrones, altars, and chests. The tomb also had four chambers. Among them, the most important was the one that contained the sarcophagus with the mummy of Tutankhamun. This 13th pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt, known as the Boy King, he assumed his mandate at the age of nine, had died around the year 1327 BC, when he was, according to various historians, between 17 and 19 years old. Number 5. 99 million year old baby snake fossil found in amber. The first known fossil remains of a baby snake have turned up in a piece of amber found in Myanmar. The creature, a new species called Chalphus myanmarensis, suffered its untimely demise about 99 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, which began 145 million years ago and ended 66.4 million years ago. First of all, it is very small. The fossil, missing only the skull, is about 5 centimeters long. In total, the snake would probably be less than 8 centimeters in length. Furthermore, its incomplete bone formation matches what we can see today in neonatal snakes. But has no one found a fossilized snake before? Well, the fossil record of snakes has been notoriously sparse until about the last 20 years. Snakes do not keep well in general, and this baby snake is especially delicate, with 97 vertebrae as thin as a waffle cone and assembled on just 47 millimeters of skeleton. Even if something that small was preserved in the fossil record, in the usual canons of fossil preservation, you would never find it. Set Sedimentary rock would crush the fragile remains and separate the vertebrae, making it almost impossible to identify the individual specimen. Thanks to this little hatchling having had the misfortune of getting trapped in the sticky amber sap, we now have an exceptionally preserved skeleton in 3D. Number 4. Lost 4,500-year-old Sun Temple Discovered by Archaeologists in Egypt a group of archaeologists made an incredible discovery in Egypt, finding the remains of what would be an ancient pharaonic solar temple in the Memphis region. It is the third of these buildings found in that country, and the first to be discovered in the last 50 years. Solar temples were buildings that were built for the pharaohs while they were still alive, as a way of granting them divine status. In contrast to the pyramids, which were built to ensure that the rulers were also gods in the afterlife. The importance of this archaeological find has to do with the fact that it's believed that throughout the history of ancient Egypt, only six of these solar temples were made, and this would be the third of them found. The discovery was made while archaeologists were excavating beneath the remains of one of the sun temples known as Abu Ghraib in the northern Egyptian archaeological region of Abu Sir on the west bank of the Nile River in the Memphis region. Archaeologists noted that the construction of the temple that was on top had what appeared to be an older foundation under its foundation. This was made of mud bricks, which suggested that there was another building before the one they were excavating. Number 3. 180 million year old sea dragon fossil unearthed. From the air, the image is striking, but when we get closer, we understand that what we have in front of us are the fossilized remains of an ichthyosaur found in England. It is the largest and most complete of its kind discovered in the UK. Ichthyosaurs were large, dolphin-like marine reptiles. They could measure up to 25 meters. This fossil is a monstrous 33 feet long, or 10 meters. It's believed to be 180 million years old. The fascinating find was found during a drainage in the lagoon, completely by accident. Ichthyosaurs were known as sea dragons because of their large eyes and teeth. They became extinct about 90 million years ago. According to scientists, this sea dragon is one of the greatest finds in British paleontological history history, as it is the most complete ichthyosaur fossil ever found and the largest so far. They added that the ichthyosaur is classified as a marine reptile rather than a dinosaur, although the first ichthyosaurs appeared at the time of the first dinosaurs about 250 million years ago and became extinct about 90 million years ago. The first sea dragon was discovered in Dorset in 1812 by a girl named Mary Anning, who became a world-renowned fossil hunter. Number 2. Bronze Age burial site in Spain suggests women were among rulers. 
An excavation at the archaeological site of La Almaloya found a double tomb in 2014. The remains of a man between 35 and 40 years old and a woman between 25 and 30 were found in the basement of a building with one of the richest grave goods from the early Bronze Age in Europe. After an exhaustive analysis of the remains, scientists have concluded that the woman belonged to the elite with decision-making power in the region. The treasure stands out not only for its volume, more than a quarter of a kilo of silver, but also for a headband associated with women, like most of the elements found. Although funerary treasures with silver pieces are common in the El Argar area, the presence of this diadem is not so common. These headbands were so exclusive that in more than a century and a half of excavations in the southeast of the peninsula, only five with this design have been found. The researchers believe that these pieces had a meaning beyond their economic value and lean towards political differentiation. There are a series of objects that we call emblematic and that have nothing to do with the function they have today. Basically, this lady was a ruler. Number 1. Pompeii, Ancient City in Italy if there's a city that seemed to emerge from the mists of time to resurrect and take on renewed life in modernity, that is Pompeii. It was wiped off the face of the earth by the brutal eruption of Vesuvius on the night of August 24, 79 AD. The city, a populous Roman enclave, and its surprised inhabitants were frozen in time in an amazing way. Its rediscovery in the 18th century allows today's travelers to become a walker through an ancient Roman city of about 11,000 inhabitants and experience in an astonishing way the sensations of the cobbled streets and daily life of ancient times. It's as if a piece of ancient Rome and its vibrant provincial life had been brought to light, stored in a laboratory. Pompeii was one more tile in the enormous mosaic of municipalities and colonies that shaped the landscape of an eminently urban empire, such as the Roman from the age of the early principality. Today, the traveler can walk amongst the temples, wineries, markets, and brothels, as well as the casts of the bodies of the terrified Pompeians that are seen in the garden of fugitives trying to escape certain death. As you can see, there are many things about the past of our species and our planet that we have yet to discover, and the idea we have of the past isn't always the full picture. What about you? Which one of these amazing discoveries is your absolute favorite? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!